Cool, and that's the grappling hook launcher. We'll just leave that there. We'll make another one. Hey everyone, welcome back to the grappling gun project. So, I guess, uh, yeah, now I've got to build a whole new one since I left that one hanging from the tree. Thankfully, I do have some very suspiciously similar looking parts, so that'll make it a bit easier. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'll also make it a little bit more compact and a little bit stronger by upgrading the main chassis. So there's going to be quite a lot of metalworking in this project, and it'd probably be really helpful if I had that steel table that I always spoke about back in the day. So maybe now's a good time to make it. Although, unfortunately, back in part two of the grappling gun series, I built a welding cart, and that used up my entire welding montage allowance for this whole series. So I'm going to have to try something different. I don't know, how about this? Whoa, okay, well, that was pretty easy for you to watch. Took a bit of work to make, but uh, totally worth it though. This metal table, and then the back is a chop saw I made out of an old angle grinder. It's not an old angle grinder. It's a good angle grinder. What am I talking about? I used an angle grinder to make a chop saw, and these are gonna make life so much easier for working with metal in the future, like on this grappling gun project. So, let's get started. I had this upgraded base piece, plasma cut, back when I was with the hacksmith in February. But plasma cutting leaves a lot of burrs and rough edges, so I had to spend ages cleaning it up with files and angle grinder and also with the belt grinder for the faces. Once I'd finished cleaning it up, I used a bike inner tube to protect the finish while I hammered a bend into it. This approach will be more comfortable and way sturdier than the previous design. Next, I had to shorten the motor's shaft so that it would fit the new frame. Precision shafts and angle grinders. Well known to be a good combination. I also needed to cut a new keyway, but uh, the only tool I had was a Dremel. Okay, so I just dropped this on the floor. Do you have any idea how hard it is to find something this big on a floor full of metal dust? But let's see if it fits. So here's the old top piece. As you can see, these two slots still match up. These two are too long. So I've got to make a new one of these. I gotta say, this is a very painstaking process. Something like a mill would make this a lot easier. Oh no, meanwhile I've bent the thing. I've left the top frame wider than it needs to be until I've figured out exactly where I'll install all the electronics and stuff. There you go, the upgraded frame is complete. Now, since it's been a while since I've used this, I'll have to re-grease the gearbox so that it runs more smoothly. That's the ratchet. Don't need that anymore. Just gonna add a little bit of grease. Next I'm just gonna upgrade the pulley a little bit, but first let me show you this chop saw I made. So in order to build the metal table, I needed to make this so I could get square cuts on all the metal. It can also slide out to get long cuts on metal too. And that's what I'm going to use to chop this nut in half, just so it has a slimmer profile on the grappling gun. And that just goes on, like so. Next up, the bolt. And there we go. That is now reinstalled on the grappling gun chassis. So I just installed this eyelet here to guide the string as it goes through the pulley. And I used some uh, aluminium shims just to try and keep it all in place and aligned and I've gone and tightened the heck out of it and hopefully that should work. Then I was able to reassemble the whole thing and install a handle before moving on to the control system and electronics. So for my throttle, I'm going to use this little potentiometer I got from an old RC remote. It's spring-loaded to the neutral position, you can go backwards and forwards. Okay. 
So let me run you through the circuitry real quick. This here is basically the hub of everything, and it's the ESC, which stands for Electronic Speed Controller. And basically an ESC is just something you buy with the sole purpose of controlling a brushless motor. This one's able to handle super high currents that it gets from these batteries over here, which is approximately 50 volts worth of lithium cells. Then the ESC receives a signal in on this line, which come from sensors inside the motor that tell the ESC exactly what position the motor is currently in. Then the ESC can do some tricky maths and send out the appropriate signals through these three phase power lines to the motor. The ESC also sends five volts out and takes a signal in on these three lines. And normally that would go straight to the throttle over here. However, I've actually programmed an Arduino to sit in the middle of everything. And let me explain why just now. So the ESC is usually designed for cars and skateboards. And even though it's actually programmable and you can choose a lot of settings, it always works the same way or usually the same way with regards to the throttle. In a car, as you put the throttle further up, you want your acceleration to increase more and more. As you put the throttle further down, you want the braking to increase more and more. And in the middle, you want it to just do nothing. However, on a grappling winch, although I do want further and further up to give me more and more acceleration, I want maximum brake in the neutral position. So that if I let go of everything, I can just hang there like a lemon. Then, as I put the throttle further and further down, I want the braking to decrease, allowing me to drop to the ground. And so that's why I've got the Arduino. It's to translate what the ESC thinks I want into what I actually want. Well, there you go. Hope you liked the update. There'll probably be just one more video of finishing it off and making it look really cool before the final test. And if you're holding out for Spider-Man, then, um, well, I mean, that's, that's fair enough, isn't it? It's been a long time, but you'll be pleased to know I've made some really cool progress on that as well. If you enjoyed this video, please consider so, I mean, let's be honest, if, you've, if you're watching part four of a series, you're probably already subscribed, hey? So uh, in that case, you guys are awesome. Thanks everyone, all the best, and I'll see you in the next one.